Hey golfers, Drew Mahol back here with Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell. He's a master club fitter at Second Swing. We are at the Minneapolis Tour Van location. Uh, we're going to be testing a couple irons today with Thomas. He's going to hit the Mizuno MP20 MB and then the Ping Blueprint irons. Thomas, thanks for joining us today. Uh, what do you think we're going to find out today? You know, I'm really interested to test these two, both blades. So, you know, mo not the most forgiving clubs, more workable. Um, you know, being a better player, I, I like feedback from, from my clubs. So I'm expecting them to probably feel pretty soft off the face, be able to work it in both directions. Um, but I'm not expecting the ball to go crazy mm -hmm. far. I'm expecting to go a pretty similar distance to what, how far I normally hit my 7-iron, which is around about 180 yards carry distance. Let's get after it, huh? Sounds good. All right, Thomas, what are we starting with here today? Got the uh, Mizuno MP20 uh, blade from when, when we tested last. I really like the feel of it. I'm really interested to see how it compares against the blueprint today. Yeah, so. and then what's the shaft we're working with today? So we've got both. the Modus 120S. We're gonna, when we're hitting the blueprint, we're also going to be playing a 120 gram shaft. Also, the Dynamic Gold 120. That one just happens to come um, stock with with the blueprint as, sure. as our fitting club. It's not a fitting head, so it's sure. just bonded. Yeah. So this is the closest we got. All right. So let's hit like four of these. Come back, hit the blueprint four times, and hit this four times, and then yeah. blueprint four times, and kind of see how everything looks. It works for me. I know you've talked a lot about the feel of the MP20 and. How you like that? So we'll see how that compares too. Yep, I'm, I'm really interested to see how it does compare and feel. Um, this, from what I from I remember last time, very buttery, soft feel mm -hmm. off the, off the face. Uh, let's kind of hit a few shots and see how it reacts today. Yeah, that's that feedback right away. You Feels felt that soft. right away? Yeah. yeah. The Mizuno uh, player's irons. Always known for that buttery feel. Yeah. That was quite some curve there for the first swing. In comparison to other, you know, muscle back blades you've played, what do you think of the, you know, appearance and look at address of the MP20? I mean, I I think what I talked about last time is I really like the look of this. It doesn't look really tiny, but it's I know it's a blade. I can tell by the, kind of the, the feedback I get. Yeah. But looking down at it, yeah, it's got a nice thin top line. Um, from heel to toe, it's you know, it's not the smallest that I've ever, I've ever seen. But it's also not the largest kind of blade that I've ever seen. I'd say it's sure. kind of right in the middle there. Mm -hmm. um, looks very, very nice at a dress. I love the uh, the shiny chrome look it's got. That feel like a better swing. Well, those last two swings were pretty solid. Yeah, that, was, that nice little uh, baby draw. Yep. Can't get away from it. All right, let's switch to the blueprint here. Sit four shots with the blueprint and then All come right. back and hit. Appearance, you know, looking down at the blueprint versus the MP20, what are the differences you notice? Noticeably a little smaller. Um, heel to toe, mm -hmm. definitely noticeable, a little, little bit smaller. Uh, thin top line. This looks like, you know, for me, just looks a little, little, little bit smaller. Kind of pretty, pretty small. So um, it's small. It's, mm -hmm. it's definitely, yeah. it's definitely a player's blade. So what are the effects of that? Do you think going into, you know, before he had any shots? You know, I would expect it to probably be more workable for the for the better player. Um, feedback. You're definitely gonna probably get better feedback possibly from being such a small club. Yeah. But forgiveness is probably the biggest thing that I'll probably notice is I may sacrifice a little bit on, on forgiveness sure. there too. So, Or it may just force me to hit some really good shots. Yeah, too. true. So, yeah. Might look down at that a little bit, you know, and kind of get a little more motivation, yep. we'll say, to hit it in the center of the face.
Definitely felt a little bit firmer off the face. Yeah, with the blueprint, it's just got a slight more, like, just a little bit more clunkier sound to it. Yeah. I think with the Mizuno, it's just a slightly more muted sound mm -hmm. to it, I think. Well, I know the big difference for Mizuno has been that copper plating underneath the uh, kind of the satin chrome finish with the MP20s. Yep. They went back to that after years of not doing it, and I think it was you know in the 90s when they put their blades together. Some of those most famous models had that copper layer. And they went back to it this year and got some great feedback from it, so they kind of implemented it. But that's been, I think that's kind of what the big difference might be in the feel that you're noticing. Yep. That that's right. Layer. They've got that copper in the entire MP line this year, yeah. right? Yep. All, all yeah. three irons? Right. Yeah, the uh, MMC and then the HMB as well. Okay. Have that copper layer. And saying it feels a little bit clunkier, it's, it's not like it's harsh off the face right. or anything like that. It still feels really, really good. Mm -hmm. I just kind of noticed that it was just a little softer there with the uh, with the Mizuno. That was a little bit messy, a little bit heavy. All right, let's jump back to the Mizuno. Hit that four more times. Well, I'm definitely noticing. You know, to start with, is dispersion is just a little bit tighter with the with the ping first off. Um, I did hit the first four shots with the Mizuno, so it could be partially to do with, do with that yeah. as well. But sure. just you know, getting getting used to the environment, getting, getting warmed oh, yeah. up a little bit. But that's why we come back and hit four more with each one. Yeah, I can definitely notice it's a lot quieter, the MP20 is. After hearing you hit the blueprint four times, it's definitely a lot you know, smoother and more muted. Just, yep. by, just to me, from here, it, you can definitely tell the difference. I'd say vibrations off the face just slightly softer with, with yeah. this as, as well. As well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that copper is doing some, some real, making some real you know, effect with that club. Yep. And uh, you know, we, we in, in our At The Turn newsletter actually, um, we put together a list of the top five Mizuno irons, and I think the top three had that copper, that copper layer. You know, those the, the top five blades, MP29, MP14, and the TN87 are kind of the most famous ones. And they had that copper layer in there, and they kind of went away from that for a while, back to the MP20, and clearly for you, you seem to be noticing something there. Yeah, notice it for sure. I mean, Mizuno, for a long time, has always felt pretty soft yeah. off, the, off the face. Right. The grain, grain flow. Grain flow foraging forged, process. Uh, you know. Definitely kind of help, help us with that. I mm -hmm. think Mizuno has been great. Feel, feedback off the face for a long, long mm -hmm. time. So. Yeah, felt like I left that face just a little bit open on that one. That felt solid. There's the trajectory you're looking for right there. Yep. That, felt, that felt pretty good. That'd be a couple feet from the hole. Sometimes I was going to remind myself to turn through. That felt good too. Yeah, there's that candle draw. Trademark. <laughs> oh, yeah. What happens when you work so hard at your game for so long when you've hit a slice for so long? You don't <laughs> want to ever do that again. <laughs> I know you've talked about your disdain for the, for the left to right trajectory. Correct. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll get you back in the blueprint here. 
Ball doesn't go as far when I hit cuts. All right, four more with the uh, blueprint here. Yeah, noticeable, just a little bit smaller club head. And just a little bit louder. That might be a little bit left. And right you are. What's interesting is I feel like I haven't quite hit this blueprint as solid. Interesting. I feel like a couple of times I feel like I've just caught it maybe slightly heavy. Still kind of gone the same distance every single right. time. I think partially, I'm, I'm going to be interested to see what my smash factor and, and ball speed number is between okay. the two of them and see if they're so actually maybe feeling the like, there. So you may be feeling like on a couple of them they went farther than you would have expected based on the contact you made? I think so, yeah. Okay. I think it feels like I haven't just hit, I haven't quite hit this as solid every time hmm. versus the Mizuno I think I've hit a little more solid. Now I may have not have presented that club face as square coming through, so that's why the dispersion is ah. getting me a little tighter there with the with the blueprint. But I just feel like I've hit the Mizuno more solid overall. Hmm. So sit one more and then let's take a look at the numbers and dive deep into the data. Yeah, there you go. That's that baby draw. Baby draw. Ends up right, you know, down that center line. You're, you're all over the, you're all over that center line there. All right, Drew. So let's take a look at the dispersion between the the two irons. Uh, one thing I'm noticing right off the bat is I do have maybe a couple of outliers. Yeah, you do. I'm gonna take just kind of one out per one. So you'll notice this one here that's kind of way over here on the left with the, um, the blueprint. So I'm gonna take that one out, and then I'm just gonna kind of see if there's anything here. Mizuno, this one here, kind of went the kind of shortest distance here, a little, little smaller, a little smash factor, so I'm going to kind of take that one out. So right off the bat, you'll notice yellow circle is smaller yeah. than white circle. Really interesting. Um, blueprint, I may not have expected that out of the blueprint. I may have actually expected the complete opposite with it being a smaller really? club head. Sure, okay. Um, it didn't present as much confidence to me looking down at it. But I, I mentioned earlier, it may force me to hit it more so. You did say so that, yeah. Definitely seven shots versus seven shots, you'll notice that that yellow circle is significantly smaller. So that's, that's good news there for, for ping, um, ping fans. You will notice distance-wise, yes, the ball did go further with the, uh, um, with the MP20s, but obviously a little larger dispersion. So consistently it was going just a little bit further mm -hmm. overall. I think the carry distance was averaging 182 and a half versus 178 and a half. So it was going four yards further carry distance and then also about four yards further kind of total distance as well. So went four yards further. Yeah. But the dispersion was tighter with the pink blue. Interesting. So that's always interesting to look at there too. Uh, if I break these two down here and just kind of kind of compare the two differences, I mentioned I felt like I maybe hit the uh, Mizuno a little more solid, maybe felt like it had a little more ball speed to it. It did. You'll notice 127, 1.1 1 .1 versus 125 with, with the blueprint. Sure. So two mile an hour more ball speed is going to give me probably that yep. four or five yards further. And your smash factor too, uh, a little bit higher yep. with the Mizuno. Obviously that would probably result in the difference there in ball speed. Yeah, 140 one versus 138. My club speed was almost identical. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't the fact that I was swinging the MP20 faster it was 0 sure. 0.3 miles an hour that's not not a lot but i was gaining it there with kind of with with the, with the ball speed a little bit there too mm -hmm. uh if we look here 
launch between the two of them, you know, half a degree apart. I'm not expecting that number to change. My golf swing's pretty consistent most of the most of the time. Maybe not so much end of October when I've kind of slowed down my right. events that I've been playing in a little bit. If we look at spin, spin rate was spinning about was it about what? 110, 110 more than than the MP20. Pretty much the same, around 5,500. With me hitting a little bit more of a draw, that spin rate's always going to be kind of on the, on the lower side versus okay. if I was going to be hitting a fade every time. So my typical shot shape is that kind of that slight little little draw, yeah. which causes the ball to spin um, a little bit on the lower side. However, I get away with it because my landing angle around about 51. Um, 51 degrees and height at 117 feet with both of them. Yeah. So both of them are very, Pretty very similar there. in height between the two of them. Um, I have stopping power. So the reason, you know, I, you know my, my height's high enough, even with a little less spin, I'm able to maybe hit the ball just a little bit further, um, but also have plenty of stopping power to stop the ball. On the yeah, so your so. spinning on the low side is kind of negated by the fact that you hit it high enough where you got that stopping power and you don't have to worry about the ball running off the green or anything like Correct. that. Correct, yeah. yeah. So it was stopping within like seven yards for, for both of them, 178, mm -hmm. 185, 182, 189. Yeah. So. Um, seven yards stopping power is plenty. Greens are typically 25, 30 paces long. Um, yeah, so across the board, pretty pretty solid numbers. I don't need to dive into my attack angle or club path or anything like that. That's not that's not going to change too much. That's mm -hmm. that's my golf swing. Right. That's data that can't control. You know, data the club. You know what the club does is probably more important for us in the, in the fitting process. All right, Thomas, you hit eight shots with the MP20. Hit eight shots the Ping Blueprint. Um, yeah, a little bit wider dispersion with the Mizuno, uh, a little bit tighter with the Ping. Uh, what else did you notice out there, and uh, what were your takeaways? Yeah, I think the biggest takeaway is, you know, 7-iron being, you know, a scratch player or a professional player, dispersion is very, very important. Mm -hmm. So that's probably one of the biggest takeaway I got was that Ping dispersion was, was incredibly smaller than it was with the Mizuno. Mizuno did go a little bit further, both lofter at 34 degrees, so I was a little surprised that I picked up a little bit more ball speed considering my club speed was the exact same between the two of them. It felt like I was hitting the Mizuno a little more solid as well. Um, but the feel on the Ping blueprint well, it did feel kind of a little harsher off the hands. Not to the point where it's like a kind of game proven clunkier kind of feel, but it did feel firmer than it felt with the, the Mizuno irons. Sure. Mizuno, that buttery feel with those Mizuno irons, it yeah. just, just feels incredible off the face. Can't really match it, huh? I, yeah, I haven't found anything close, I don't think, yeah. And one thing I, you also mentioned was the forgiveness of the blueprint you thought was kind of a little bit better than you expected, given that, you know, there was a couple of shots with the pinning that you commented that you maybe didn't hit it quite in the center, but the performance of the shot seemed to kind of exceed your expectations. Yeah, I think we took one shot out per, per club. The one shot was the one that was kind of way, way mm -hmm. over the left that I hit with the, with the ping. That was more me. That wasn't really kind yeah. of the club or anything like that. Um, but once I took that one out, you just noticed how small that circle was. End of the day, I would have expected this to be probably a little bit less forgiving than the, the Mizuno would be. But the numbers and the data kind of speak for mm -hmm. itself. I mean, there's extra stuff built into this blade that still makes the club still forgiving enough to be able to hit the ball straight. Right. Great stuff, Thomas. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Golfers out there, Mizuno, MP20, Ping Blueprint Irons, uh, both excellent players, uh, muscle back irons for you. If you're interested in either one of these models, I'd talk to a master fitter such as Thomas Campbell or go on to our website at secondswing.com. Uh, also, if you like the video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content like this. Thanks again, Thomas. All right. Thanks, Drew.